In this video, we'll see our first bound on the trade-off between rate and distance, known as the Hamming bound. Last time, we left off with the question, what is the best trade-off between rate and distance? The Hamming bound establishes some limitation on how good this trade-off can be. Here's the basic idea. Suppose that this box here is all of sigma to the n. And suppose that we have some code with distance d, and these are the code words of our code. Now, let's consider the balls of radius d minus 1 over 2 around each one of these code words. Let's say they look like this. Just as we saw before, all of these balls are going to be disjoint from each other because they have radius d minus 1 over 2, the floor of that, and every pair of these points is at least d apart since c has distance d. So the idea of the Hamming bound is the following. We have here c, size of c, disjoint Hamming balls of radius d minus 1 over 2, but somehow they all have to fit in this space, sigma to the n. So we can't have too many of these Hamming balls, or else they wouldn't all fit. Therefore, we can't have too many code words. Therefore, the rate of the code can't be too big. It turns out that this simple logic can actually yield a bound that is pretty good in some situations. In order to turn this idea into a quantitative bound, we need a few more definitions. First, let's define a Hamming ball. I've been using this term a little bit so far. Uh, hopefully you get the idea informally, but let's formally define it. The Hamming ball in sigma to the n of radius e about some point x in sigma to the n is defined as b sub sigma to the n of x comma e equals the set of all points y in sigma to the n so that the Hamming distance between x and y is at most e. The volume of a Hamming ball is just the size of that Hamming ball. I'm going to use the notation vol sub size of sigma of e comma n to denote this. So this is just the number of points in this Hamming ball, b sub sigma to the n of x comma e. This might look a little bit funny since this side of the definition has an x in it and this side does not, but fortunately this is okay because the size of this Hamming ball does not actually depend on x. So I guess to make this definition more legit, we should replace this x with a zero or something like that. Just fix our favorite x. Just as an aside, sometimes when I write this notation, I might omit the sigma to the n when it's clear from context. And I'll try not to, but I might also uh, accidentally switch up the order of these parameters, but I'll, I'll try not to. Hopefully, whenever I write something like this, it'll be clear from context uh, what I mean, what's the center and what's the radius. I might also, instead of an e, write a number between 0 and 1 to indicate relative Hamming distance rather than absolute Hamming distance. OK, so we have this definition of volume. What actually is it? Well, we can write down a formula. The volume of the q -ary Hamming ball of radius e in dimension n. So here we're just taking sigma to be some alphabet of size q. In general, throughout this class, q is typically going to be the size of sigma. So this is just 1 plus n choose 1 times q minus 1 plus n choose 2 times q minus 1 squared plus dot 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 plus n choose e times q minus 1 to the e. And the reason for that is, uh, so this 1 here, this is counting the all 0 vector, that is all of the vectors of weight 0 with uh, 0 non-zero elements. This term is counting all of the elements with weight 1. This term is counting all of the elements with weight 2, and so on. Another quick definition. 
When I say the weight of a vector, I mean the number of non-zeros. So for a vector x in sigma to the n, where sigma contains zero, the weight of x is just the number of non-zero entries of x. Typically, we're going to think of sigma as either the numbers 0 through q minus 1, or as something called a finite field, which we'll define in a future video. But in either case, 0 is going to be an element of sigma. OK, so armed with these definitions, let's return to our previous idea about deriving a bound on the best trade-off possible between rate and distance. So the idea was this picture. Not too many disjoint Hamming balls can live in sigma to the n. Let's see be a subset of sigma to the n, so it's a code of length n over the alphabet sigma. And let's say it has distance d and message length k. And let's let q be the size of sigma. Then, following the intuition that we had before from this picture, we must have that c times the volume, the qary volume, of a Hamming ball of radius d minus 1 over 2 in dimension n has to be less than or equal to q to the n. This here is the total volume taken up by all those disjoint balls. And this is the volume of the whole space, sigma to the n. Taking the log base q of both sides of this equation, we see that the log base q of the size of c plus the log base q the qary volume of a Hamming ball of radius d minus 1 over 2 in n dimensions is less than or equal to n. Rearranging this, we see that the rate of the code, which remember is defined to be log base q of the size of c divided by n, has to be less than or equal to 1 minus the log base q of this volume divided by n. So this here gives us a bound on the rate in terms of the distance. So the distance shows up here. And here's the rate. And this is called the Hamming bound. To see the Hamming bound in action, let's return to example three from the previous video. This was the code with the circles. It's also called the Hamming code. So here I've copied over the Hamming bound that we got on the previous slide, and I've also recorded the parameters that we had from that example 3. So if you'll remember, k, the message length, was 4, n, the block length, was 7, d, the distance, was equal to 3, and q, the alphabet size, was equal to 2. So let's see how well the Hamming bound does. Let's start by computing this volume here. The qary volume of the Hamming ball of radius d minus 1 over 2 in n dimensions. For our particular example, this is the volume over an alphabet of size 2 of a Hamming ball of radius 1 in dimension 7. And using that formula that we got on the previous slide, this is 1 plus 7 choose 1, which is 8. Thus, we can write down what the Hamming bound says here. It says that k over n, for this setting of parameters, cannot be any larger than 1 minus the log base 2 of 8, that's 3, divided by n, that's 7. So this is equal to 4 sevenths. But notice that for example 3, actually k over n is equal to 4 sevenths. So it means that in this case, the Hamming bound is tight. So what does it mean for the Hamming bound to be tight? Well, that means that this code, this example 3 that we saw with the circles, achieves the best possible trade-off between rate and distance, at least when k equals 4, n equals 7, q equals 2. That's pretty neat. OK, so that just about wraps it up for this video but I want to leave you with a question to ponder. And the question is, can you come up with other codes so that the Hamming bound is tight? Such codes would be provably optimal, at least in their trade-off between rate and distance. 
In particular, can you generalize this example three that we saw? Or can you come up with some completely different code with these same parameters or with different parameters? We'll address this question to some extent in a future video.